Hey, Jonathan here. Thanks for joining me as we do a study of some of the most common questions about Catholic belief and practices. And the way we're doing that, we're looking directly, quote by quote, through the Catechism of the Catholic Church to see what the authoritative teaching is of the church. And then we're doing a Bible study on it with some tough questions. In fact, if you'd like the whole Bible study, uh, you can get it for free, uh, ebook, trustworthyword.com backslash Catholic. Here's an important question. Was Peter married? And is priestly celibacy, so the idea that a priest is not to be married, is that in the Bible? Well, what is the Catholic Church says? It says, all the ordained ministers of the Latin Church, with the exception of permanent deacons, are normally chosen among men of faith who live a celibate life and intend to remain celibate for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Here's another quote. In the Eastern Churches, so think Greek Orthodox, uh, Russian Orthodox, uh, a different discipline has been enforced for many centuries. Married men can be ordained as deacons and priests. The practice has long been considered legitimate. Celibacy is a sign of this new life of the service in which the church's minister is consecrated. Accepted with a joyous heart, celibacy radiantly proclaims the reign of God. But what about Peter? Peter. The Bible says very clearly there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And let the one who is able to receive this, receive it. But does this Matthew 19 verse 12 sound like a voluntary choice among believers, or does this sound like a mandate among priests? It's an important question. Here's another passage. Jesus entered Peter's house. He saw Peter's mother-in-law. Simon's, Peter's, mother-in-law. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law. So was Peter married? Well, the Bible's really clear. In fact, 1 Corinthians 9, 5 doesn't just speak of Peter. It says, look, don't we have the right among, to take a believing wife? as do the other apostles and the brothers of Jesus and Cephas, Peter. So it's not just Peter who's married. The brothers of Jesus are married. It's not just the brothers of Jesus who are married. There's other apostles who are married. So if this is going on, why would the encouragement, encouragement of a right to marriage be there but not in here? Why would the encouragement for leaders in the early church that there's a right to be married and they're doing so when it's not in here? Listen, the two descriptions of Christian leaders, 1 Timothy 3, Titus 1, both look at their qualification based on how they treat their wives, how they lead their families. It's very important. Their descriptions are encouragements. Are they encouragements or mandates to singleness? Now, 1 Corinthians 7 has a lot of positive things to say about singleness. But the Bible doesn't mandate church leaders to be celibate or to be single. It actually encourages and references their marriages. There's a danger, though. 1 Timothy 4.3 references and warns. There are people out there who will forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Well, why does this verse matter? Here's the question. Does this apply to the Catholic Church? Is this warning directed even towards the Catholic Church about priestly celibacy for obligations, obligatory days of mandatory fasting, abstinence from food, forbidding marriage? important questions. Listen, these are tough questions, touchy questions, but ultimately we need to look at the evidence, the biblical evidence, the Catholic evidence, and we need to consider what's true and decide for ourselves what to hold on to. If this question and these answers have been helpful to you, this resource has been helpful to you, I hope you'll consider sharing it and maybe go online, trustworthyword.com backslash Catholic for more free resources and videos. Thanks for joining me.